Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway and I think you know that by now. Um, I'm the author of this book, On This Day in Tudor History. Um, I hope you can see that. Um, and also author of several other history books and founder of the Tudor Society website too. Okay, today I'm taking you back to 1552 and the reign of King Edward VI. On this day in Tudor history, the 2nd of April 1552, the 14-year-old King Edward VI recorded in his journal, I fell sick of the measles and the smallpox. Wow, measles and smallpox. I mean, one of those uh, diseases uh, alone was serious enough. I mean, smallpox was uh, something that was incredibly dangerous in the Tudor period and obviously a bit later as well. Now, in his book, Pustules, Pestilence and Pain, which is about uh, Tudor treatments and um, the ailments of Henry VIII, Seamus O'Coley uh, describes the development of um, smallpox um, after an incubation period of around 12 to 14 days a person would start to develop symptoms and Seamus writes the symptoms can include high fever, weakness, head and body aches and vomiting. This may last for two to four days. After the high fever spots start to appear in the mouth. These spots develop into sores that break open and spread large amounts of the virus into the mouth and throat. When the sores in the back of the throat start to break down, a rash starts to appear on the skin and moves from the face to the trunk and then out to the limbs. When the rash starts, the fever usually falls and the person may start to feel better. On the third day of the rash, the rash becomes the well-known raised bumps that are the disease's namesake. The fourth day brings the bumps filling with a thick, cloudy fluid. Fever often will rise again and remain high until scabs form. The bumps feel like there are hard objects inside them, like a bead under the skin. The second week after the rash appears, most of the sores have scabbed over. The scabs begin to fall off, leaving marks on the skin that eventually become pitted scars. Most scabs will have fallen off three weeks after the rash appears. Now, once a person had had smallpox and survived, they couldn't catch it again. They were then immune to it. Now, Seamus, in his book, which I would highly recommend, also describes um, different treatments for smallpox, which he found in the contemporary sources. A barley water drink was used to help temper the fever. Um, barley mixed with poppy and wild lettuce was used to help the person sleep and a sulphur-based oil was applied on the um, spots and a sulphur-based ointment applied to the scabs that formed. So we can assume that um, those kind of treatments were used on King Edward VI. Now, 10 days after Edward had recorded coming down with, uh, you know, these illnesses and feeling ill, the Imperial Ambassador recorded... I arrived here on the evening of the 12th instant, and the next morning the ambassador and I sent to the Duke of Northumberland to inform him of my arrival and demand audience. He replied that I was very welcome and informed us that the king had recently had the measles and was not yet quite recovered, so he feared audience might not be given for five or six days. Then he added in a postscript, after the above was written, the council sent Mr Hovey to tell me that the king was not quite recovered from the smallpox and as he still bore some marks on his face, he did not wish to show himself to strangers. Hovey therefore saw little chance of my obtaining audience for ten days. He begged me to be patient, but said that if my charge was urgent, I might come to the council to declare it and discuss it with them until I should be able to make a more ample declaration to the king when restored to health. So there we've got that ambassador mentioning the measles and the smallpox, as Edward did when he recorded coming down with the illnesses. Then on the 21st of April, so what's that, 19 days after um, Edward had recorded coming down with these uh, illnesses, um, Edward's half-sister, the Princess Elizabeth, wrote to him. I'm going to read out her letter. I do love Elizabeth's letters. 
What cause I had of sorrow when I first heard of your majesty's sickness, all men might guess, but none but myself could feel, which to declare were or might seem a point of flattery, and therefore I omit to write it. But as the sorrow could not be little, because the occasions were many, so is the joy great to hear of your good escape out of the perilous diseases, and that I am fully satisfied and well assured of the same by your grace's own hand. I must need give you my most humble thanks, assuring your majesty that a precious jewel at another time could not so well have contented as your letter in this case hath comforted me. For now do I say with St. Austin that a disease is to be accounted no sickness that shall cause a better health when it is past than was assured afore it came. For afore you had them, every man thought that that should not be eschewed of you that was not escaped of many. But since you've had them, doubt of them is past, and hope is given to all men that it was a purgation by these means for other worse diseases which might happen this year. Moreover, I consider that, as a good father that loves his child dearly, doth punish him sharply, so God, favouring your majesty greatly, have chastened you straightly, and as a father doth it for the further good of his child. So hath God prepared this for the better health of your grace. And in this, I commit your majesty to his hands, most humbly craving pardon of your grace that I did write no sooner, desiring you to attribute the fault to my evil head and not to my slothful hand. From Hatfield, this 21st of April, your majesty's most humble sister to command, Elizabeth. I just love that. I mean, she's saying, obviously, that she heard it from the king himself that he'd recovered. And she's, you know, talking about how him, you know, surviving these illnesses means that he's stronger, you know, in, in case other illnesses come along. And it's just a lovely, lovely letter. And it just shows that um, Edward seemed to recover quite quickly from, you know, the fact that he had these two diseases at the same time. On the 3rd of May, 1552, so that's just over a month after he came down with the illnesses, Edward wrote to one of his best friends, Barnaby Fitzpatrick. We have a little been troubled with the smallpox, which hath lettered us to write hitherto, but now we have shaken that quite away. Now, Edward was incredibly lucky. I mean, when Elizabeth went on to catch smallpox in 1562, it was feared that she was going to die. Obviously, she did recover. His quick recovery suggests that perhaps he either only had the diseases lightly or that he had a very good constitution at the time. However, fast forward to 1553, and he wasn't so lucky. He was taken ill in January, February 1553, and he never actually got better. His biographer, Chris Skidmore, and I would recommend Chris Skidmore's uh, biography of Edward, he believes that this April 1552 bout of smallpox and measles suppressed Edward's immune system and led to him um, then dying of some type of pulmonary infection or tuberculosis on the 6th of July 1553. Now, Kyra Kramer in her book, actually, I might be able to reach it. Is that it? This is uh, Kyra's book, um, Edward VI. It's part of the In a Nutshell series. Um, in her book, Kyra puts forward the idea that Edward VI, his half-brother Henry Fitzroy, and also his uncle Arthur Tudor, who died actually on this day in 1502, all suffered from non-classic cystic fibrosis. And that's a very interesting theory and one that I haven't got uh, time really to go into or expertise to go into actually. And I'd recommend Kyra's Kramer, Kyra Kramer's uh, book if you want to know more about her theory on uh, non-classic cystic fibrosis and the deaths of those three royals. Anyway, that's what happened on this day in Tudor history, the 2nd of April, 1552. Edward VI became ill with both smallpox and measles, but survived those only to die in July, 1553, just over a year later.
I'll be back tomorrow with another Tudor history event. You can subscribe by just clicking that button around there. And of course, hit the bell to be uh, notified of new videos. Take care. Bye-bye.